now available in paperback and Kindle Unlimited, Isis, Escape from Transylvania. The goddess next door and John Haynes must escape a horde of vampires from a hunt in this horror-filled Isis series adventure. Get Isis, Escape from Transylvania in paperback and Kindle Unlimited today. I was looking at the traffic sources from my blog, Sean James Black Freelance Writer, when I noticed a link to comicbookresources.com. Now, I've had people link to my blog from Comic Book Resources in the past, and they've been doing so since 2011. And as I decided to click the link to comicbookresources.com that was left in my traffic sources on the page, I was taken to the black section of comicbookresources.com where they talked about black superheroes and they talked about the black part of the comic book community. And as I was reading through their posts, I noticed a lot of butthurt in that section regarding either a blog I recently wrote or a video I recently wrote made. And when it came down to this butthurt, it was so bad that people were going into hysteronics and ad hominem attacks regarding whatever I wrote, whether it be, I believe, No Hope, No Change from Marvel Comics under C.B. Sobolski, or something else I had written. But I believe it was really the blog and video I did called No Hope, No Change under Marvel Comics under C.B. Sobolski, because that was the most recent blog I had written regarding Marvel Comics, and it looked like that blog and video fired up a lot of butthurt on the black side of CBR. And I listened to the, uh, the comments in that section, and it was, again, quite troubling, because here we had a group of black men, and they weren't acting like black men. Now, oftentimes, I read content online that I disagree with and I have, you know, issues with. And I can read that content and take it with a grain of salt and keep it moving. However, these individuals decided that they didn't like what they read or what they saw in one of my comic videos, and they got so butthurt that they literally went into ad hominem attacks, talking about my unemployment situation, talking about my hair, talking about things that weren't related to the argument. And when you go into ad hominem attacks, when somebody is presenting an argument or a discourse regarding a topic, it's clear that this person does not has, know what they're talking about, one, or you have presented an argument that is so irrefutable that this person cannot challenge any of the points you have presented in your argument. And it looks like I might have presented an argument that was too strong for many of those black males on that comicbookresources.com website and because they could not challenge the argument I presented in my thesis regarding no hope, no change for Marvel Comics under C.B. Sobolski, they started getting really upset because in the no hope, no change for Marvel Comics under C.B. Sobolski video, I pretty much talked about how Marvel Comics was on its way to joining Dell, Fox, and Charlton Comics on the comic book publishing scrap heap because your C.B. Sobolski and your Vice President of Content and Character Development, Sana Amanat, were doubling down on their failed diversity campaign and were planning on turning Marvel Comics into a lifestyle and entertainment brand instead of a comic book publisher. Now, in this whole argument, I was making it a point that, you know, your C.B. Sobolski doubled down on a campaign that had failed for Marvel Comics over the last two years. The same campaign that led to the termination of Axel Alonso and led to the Marvel Comics brand declining in sales. And when I take a look at your Marvel Comics, that's why I said there was no hope and no change for Marvel Comics. But it seems like some of these black comic fans don't want to see The Undertaker coming out with the coffin to put Marvel Comics in. because. When people look at that red logo, they're looking at it and seeing not a brand that's family-oriented. They're seeing a brand that is completely dysfunctional and has no direction. Because when you have a comic publisher who is sitting there talking about how it's having a boy problem, you have a serious problem with that publisher. Because, again, comics were created 
by men for boys. But it seems like many of these black males are too busy trying to bootlick to see the bigger picture as related to comics. And because they don't want to see the bigger picture as related to comics, they don't want to understand that when it relates to Marvel Comics, when you say that you have a boy problem, you it's like saying McDonald's has a children problem. Now, McDonald's gets most of its money from who? Parents who buy food for children. So for them to say they have a children problem would be the same thing as Marvel saying it has a boy problem. Superheroes were created by men for boys, and that's the way it's always been since the 1930s. However, when it comes down to some of these black males, they just want to be able to kowtow and bootlick Mr. Charlie, and they're not thinking about the bigger picture. And when you present facts to them, they can't refute the facts, so they go into ad hominem attacks and shaming tactics. And what's really sad about this whole situation is you have many of these guys on this message board, and they've been on this message board for years, you know, talking about me, myself, my work, but they never, as I see it, have been supportive of myself and my work. And I sit there and I say to myself, you talk about my work and what I'm doing on these message boards, but have you ever bought an SJS Direct book? Have you ever shared a link to an SJS Direct book? And have you ever made an effort to support an SJS Direct book by either, going, again, going out to buy a book in paperback or ebook? Or have you gone out here to go out here and tell others about the SJS Direct imprint? Now, these same guys will sit there and get mad about me criticizing Ta-Nehisi Coates, the grossly unqualified writer of Black Panther and soon-to-be the guy who destroys the entire reputation of Captain America. But you'll never see all these guys talk about ISIS or John Haynes or Easting on any of their CBR boards. No. They get mad because I talk about guys like Tana Hishi Coates being grossly unqualified and being a race hustler, but you'll never hear them talk about buying any sort of SJS direct work. They'll talk about my unemployment, but they won't make any efforts to support any SJS direct publications. And that's what's really sad about many of these black comic fans. They are more loyal to Marvel than trying to go out here and support a black-owned business. They'll sit there and complain about, you know, Marvel or try to stand up and defend Marvel, but they won't go out here and support a black-owned business that makes efforts to present, you know, positive images of African Americans or tell stories from a different point in the African American experience. They won't spend any money with a black comic publisher or a black science fiction and fantasy writer, but they'll sit there and talk about, you know, a guy having a critique of, of Marvel and get upset about that, but won't make any efforts to help that black publisher make efforts to try to get more sales. And that's what really other part that makes me shake my head. You have these black males who will go behind a black man's back to talk about him and won't express their grievances directly to him, nor will they go out here and support the work of a black publisher. No, they will go on a white man's message board and argue about that black man, but they won't make any efforts to either express their grievances to that black man and, you know, settle their problem with that black man the way a man does, nor will they go out of their way to support the work of that black publisher who is making efforts to present a positive and balanced image of black men, something you're not going to get at Marvel, especially under a guy like your Ta-Nehisi Coates a man who has gone out of his way to push the victimization narrative no matter wherever he goes, whether it be in Black Panther or a book like Black Panther and the Crew, where all he does is promote black victimization. And as I see it, we need to have a more balanced picture of black people in media, and we need to stop getting out of that victimization narrative. And that's why I would go out of my way to write books like your ISIS House of ISIS, because I really want you to see that there is more to the black community than this victimization narrative. Because I really want to give people a balanced picture of things. That's something that we didn't get in your Ta-Nehisi Coates, Black Panther, and the crew. In Isis House of Isis, I show you, you know, the pro-black, and I also show you the overall bigger picture of the black community. And that's something we didn't get in your 
Ta-Nehisi Coates' Black Panther and the crew, and something we don't get in his Black Panther or his Captain America. And that's something that many black comic fans, again, don't want to discuss because they're more interested in buying Marvel for social acceptance of white people rather than going out here and looking for balanced and humanized images of black people. When I go out here and publish stories, I want to give people balanced and humanized stories featuring black people, and I want to give people stories that show you a positive story of the African American experience, and I want to give you African American fantasy that not only allows people to escape, but to learn more about the black culture, more about the black experience, more about black history. That's what I want people to get out of my work. And it's really sad is these guys are more angry about me calling out Marvel for its dysfunction than going out here to support SJS Direct in any way, shape, or form. I mean, I, as I see it, you know, when I look at Marvel, there's no hope and no change, but if you won't really want things to change regarding the black image, you have to go out here and support those black publishers who are going to present you with a balanced image. Because if you really want to get great black heroes, you're not going to get it from a white comic company that hires race hustlers. You're going to get it from black men in the community who understand the community, understand the issues of the community, and are concerned about the issues of the community. And again, it really makes me shake my head that these guys were more into ad hominem attacks and angry about things, whereas I talked about no hope and no change for Marvel, than trying to make change in their own community by supporting a publisher who wants to support them, like SJS Direct. If you want to try some of my SJS Direct titles, you may do so by clicking the link to Amazon.com in the description box. And if you want to donate to my Patreon to help me make more videos, you may do so by clicking the link to my Patreon. That's all I have to say for this video. You can comment, rate, and subscribe. Now available in paperback and e-readers, E-Steam Ascension, The Devil's Devil, which is a turning point in the life of this powerful E-Steam series story. Get E-Steam Ascension at online booksellers today.